Let's get started with the needle exam. The first muscle that we're going to do is the first dorsal interosseous, which is right here between the index and thumb. And uh, this muscle is innervated by the ulnar nerve. Now let's see what electrodes we're going to need to plug in. In this case, just like in every nerve conduction that we've done, we need to plug in three electrodes. But there's a slight difference. Uh, the black active electrode is going to be replaced by the needle while the ground green electrode and the reference electrode are going to stay the same. So the first one I'm going to put is the ground, which is a green electrode right here, like so. The second one I'm going to put is going to be the reference electrode, like so. And the black electrode that we use for the nerve conduction now is going to be replaced by the needle. And here's the needle. First, I'm going to open the needle. That's a sterile needle. It's a one use only. And the needle is like so. It's a one use only and it's delivered sterile obviously. And the this is the wire that comes out of the needle. Imagine as though it's black because that's going to be the active electrode. So I'm going to plug this into the black part of the of the electrodes. Here we go. And now I have it this way. So this is the needle. Again, it's sheathed to protect you from sticking yourself and making sure you don't stick the patient in the wrong place either. So I'm going to put this here. And now I'm going to put the reference electrode, first of all. I put it on a bone somewhere nearby. Make sure there's no muscle signals right there. And for the green electrode, the ground electrode, I'm going to put it somewhere right here on the back of the hand, essentially. That's what it looks like on the back of the hand. So you really won't see it during the test, but it is right there. Now you will notice, obviously, that I'm wearing gloves. And the reason we do that is to protect yourself from the patient and protect the patient from you because whenever you're doing needle insertion, you might actually draw some blood. And uh, that's, that's the reason you want to protect yourself from the patient and you want to protect the patient from you. And you notice that a couple of other things that I've added in the scene here, and that's a dry gauze, because if you actually encounter some bleeding, you want to press on the spot that is bleeding. You don't want to wipe it. You want to press on it and press on it for like about 30 seconds until you stop the bleeding. And of course, we have an alcohol swab to wipe the muscle or the skin area of the muscle before you get started. So these, these things are always on my side here. Now, if you look at the screen, you can see the area where we stick the needle inside the muscle right here. And I'll explain this to you later. You will see actually what the potentials from the muscle activity looks like. Uh, this here is where you see the signals from the muscle. And this here, this area here, it shows the triangle, which we call the cloud. Actually, is going to show you where the muscle activity is going to be stored in the computer to, for later analysis. So here we go. We're going to start with the first dorsal interosseous muscle. So the first thing I do is I'm going to wipe the skin with the alcohol swab. And then this is the needle, and we're going to insert the needle in the muscle. So to find out where the muscle is so that I can stick the needle, I'm going to ask her to activate the muscle by asking her to lift the index finger up. And you can tell here, right here, that this is where the muscle is. So now. I stick the needle in the muscle, now relax. I only stick the needle in the muscle when the patient is relaxed. So here we go. And now we're going to see the activity of the muscle. So the, the button that I press here is called EMG play. I'm going to press that. And this is, uh, lift your finger up a little bit. You see now when she lifts her finger up, I can see the motor units. They're called motor units because they move the muscle. Put, them up, put your finger down. And now what I need to do is actually do some, something we call insertional activity. Here we go. I insert the needle in the muscle. You see some spikes, and they stop as soon as I stop. If they continue, that means that there's unusual activity in the muscle. Sometimes they continue because you have uh, the needle close to the area where the nerve enters the muscle. That's not bad. But if they continue 
and you're away from the area where the, knee, where the nerve enters the muscle, that means those are fibrillation and positive waves, and that means that there is denervation, that the muscle lost its nerve supply. So the next thing that I do is I'm going to start looking at activation. I do it at three different uh, levels. I ask her to activate the muscle just a little bit, so pull up just a little bit. That's mild activation. And as soon as I like this mild activation, I start recording this. And here you see this on the screen showing up on the screen. As soon as it fills the screen, I press store. And now notice, now relax the muscle. Notice that you have the dots that recorded this activity right here in the left of the, of the cloud. We call that triangle cloud. The next level is I do a moderate contraction. And again, I do exactly the same thing here. I press on the right. And as soon as the screen is filled, I press the now relax. And now you can see that there's more activity. And the last thing that I do is ask her to put full activation all the way, all the way up. Notice that I'm holding her finger to make sure she give her enough resistance. And I take that. And now you can see that the dots are showing up at the right of the cloud, essentially. This looks uh, well with the normal limits. And that was the first dorsal interosseus. So now I will take the needle out. And it's very important at that point that when you're taking the needle out, first of all, I'm going to stop the acquisition. When you're taking the needle out, watch for bleeding. I'm taking the needle out like that, and I'm watching to see if she's bleeding. And in fact, she's not bleeding. But if she is bleeding, what I'll do is I'll press on that, and I press on it for about 30 seconds to stop the bleeding before going to the next muscle.